Hi, I'm Chelsea, and today I'm going to show you my favorite way to apply natural looking makeup using Photoshop. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is select a new layer and get in the habit of naming them right away because it's good to stay organized. So I'm going to name this Lips because we're going to do her lips first. So once you have your layer named, right where it says Normal here, you want to click on this drop down menu and make it an overlay layer. The next thing you're going to do is select your paintbrush. Make sure that it's soft and has soft edges and the size you want it to be about like the thickness of the top lip. You want it to be thin so that you have some more control. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is zoom in on her lips here so that uh, you can see what I'm doing. And then I press space bar and then that I can drag the image. Select your color. And since I'm going for a natural look, I want to select a dark color on her lips because that's her natural skin tone, so it's going to look good. And now you just paint it on. Oh, my opacity's down. Make sure your opacity's up to 100% up here. So let me paint that in. And if you can't reach the corners because your brush is too fat, you can make it smaller up here, or you can use the keyboard short cut like I like to use and that's the left bracket on your keyboard and then just get the corners and if you go off the edges you don't have to redo the whole thing you know what you can do I'm gonna tell you right now select the eraser um, I like to keep the opacity down a little bit make sure it's soft and then you can just go around the edges and clean them up I'm using a tablet so I have a bit more control than you might have if you're using a mouse so now Go back to this lips layer and lower the opacity. It's like I said, this is going to be natural looking makeup, so I don't want it really bright. I'll put it at about 25, 27%. Looks like a nice lip gloss. So that's your first layer. It was really easy, and we're just going to repeat that process uh, with the cheeks and the eyes, eyeliner, eyebrows. So let's start our next layer. And like I said, stay organized. So let's name it right away and we'll name this layer blush. Go up here and make it an overlay layer. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Select the brush. I'm going to use a soft brush. Then I'm gonna select the color by taking a natural color from Asia's cheeks. And then just making it a little bit more saturated by pulling in like that. Okay, and I want my brush to be bigger and just get the apple of her cheeks. Now this looks crazy. I realize that, but you're going to be lowering the opacity and then it looks normal. Just like a nice glow to her cheeks. That's it for that layer. Let's do the eyeliner next. And the reason you want to do the eyeliner in the eye shadow in separate layers is that you might want your liner darker. Usually the eyeliner is darker and the eyeshadow is lighter, so if you put them in the same layer, you wouldn't have as much control. Let's do liner. And once again, select overlay, and I'm gonna do the same thing, select the brush, and to get the color, I'm gonna select from her lash line. Uh, you can see that it's a dark brown and not black, like you may have guessed. She has very fair skin and red hair, so black might look too harsh since I'm going for a natural look. If I were doing this makeup on myself, if you know what I look like, I have dark hair and olive skin, so I might actually choose black for me. It all depends on your model. So let me zoom in so we can see what I'm doing. Press the space bar to drag. And I'm using the left bracket to make my brush smaller, but if you don't like shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts, you can go up here to control your brush size and hardness. So I'm just going to follow the natural lash line. And I'm going to do the bottom lash line as well. Now let's go over to this eye. I'm going to fill in right there. You don't have to worry about getting it perfect because you can go back with your eraser. Uh, let's make this eraser a little smaller. And I like to just blend it a little bit, make it look a little more natural. Okay, and let's lower the opacity over here and see what that looks like. Hey, that looks pretty good. Before we move on to the shadow, I'll show you a neat trick. I sometimes like to add eyelashes. 
So let's put in lashes here. And the same thing we're going to do. Well, I don't know, we might want to do a normal layer on this one, but let's try overlay first. And we'll keep the same color, but this time you want your brush really tiny since you're going to be making individual hairs. And you can just add them like this. See a little bald spot here? So once again, I'm using the tablet so I have a little more control. It might be harder for you if you're using uh, your mouse and you're not very good at it. Tony's really good at it. I'm not very good with a mouse. And I'm just drawing in the lashes. And you can see that naturally lashes, you don't just go straight. They crisscross a little bit. They don't all go in one direction. You see, they, they can cross. And that actually makes them look a little thicker when they're crossing a little. Sometimes they can end up having blunt ends, the lashes. And what I'll do in is, is just go in with the eraser and move the opacity down to about between 30 and 40 percent and just hit the ends. And like hair naturally does, it just kind of thins it out at the end to make it look a bit more natural. And then the opacity on this it looks pretty good. I just lower it a tiny bit just to make it blend. Um, right now I have it zoomed into 200%. Even when they look at your photo at stock, they only do it at 100%. So if we back off to 100%, that looks nice and natural. Okay, so the lashes are done. Let's go to shadow, eyeshadow. And I'm going to use, I'm gonna use the same color. I'm not gonna go crazy with the colors. I like a nice natural palette. So let me use my right bracket to make my, my brush bigger. Once again, if you don't like keyboard shortcuts, you can go up here and control the brush that way. And oh, I almost forgot my layer here. Overlay and let's draw this on. So even when you're doing eyeshadow in real life, you imagine imaginary line between the corner of the eye and the end of the eyebrow, and you don't really want to go past that. So if you're doing really avant-garde, contemporary makeup, high fashion, crazy makeup, you know, you can ignore me. Just if you're being creative, it's different. But if you're doing an everyday look, you don't want it coming out too far to the side, um, like over here, or, you know, you don't want too deep of shadows over here. I'm going to press Control z and erase that. And I'm being a little bit sloppy because I plan on going back with my eraser tool and cleaning it up. So I can be a little crazy like that. All right, let me make my eraser bigger with my right bracket. And I'm gonna raise the opacity. Make sure I don't have any in her eyes. So I'll just go over the whites, okay. And it looks like a black eye now because it's full opacity, but if you lower it, it blends in really nicely. See that? So you can see I'm really just using the same method over and over again, but making different layers so I can control the opacity of each layer. Let's do the eyebrows and just fill them in a tiny bit. And overlay, I'm going to use a brush and select her, well, maybe I'll choose it from her natural hair. Hold on, let me choose the darkest part of her eyebrow. Okay. And this I want to be really light. So I'm just going to bring the opacity down. Otherwise, if I just go over it really dark, it's going to look funny. So. Let me move it down to about 50% so I have a better idea of what the finished product will look like. And I'm going to be erasing a lot. So again, I'm being a little bit messy. and I'll lower the opacity even more. That looks good, it looks natural. 
One thing I'm going to recommend is when you're making incremental adjustments, you can kind of uh, get used to it so you don't realize that things are looking a little bit fake and unnatural. So usually what I do when I'm finished is I go back to each layer and I lower it a bit more. Since I've adjusted to the way it looks, I might not realize that things are getting a little cheesy looking. So let me back off of everything about 10%. Okay, that's even more natural. And now I'm going to show you how to change her eye color. So let's zoom in on her eyes and I'm gonna use the lasso tool here. And I'll, I'm gonna zoom in even farther so you can see. When you're selecting the eyes, you don't wanna to try to get completely into the white because everyone eyes, everyone's eye has this little line here between the iris and the white that's kind of gray and not quite well defined and you wanna select right before that because you don't want to change the color of that and it will look more natural if you don't select it. Um, so I selected that. If I want to select something else without undoing the selection, uh, you click this button here or you press shift. I like the keyboard shortcuts. Sometimes I actually forget the buttons because I use these keyboard shortcuts so much. Okay, and now you want to deselect the white highlights in her eyes because no matter what color her eyes are, the highlights would always be white. So you can either, oh, kind of messed that up. You can press this to deselect or you can use the Alt key, which I generally prefer to do, it's faster. Okay. Now that you have everything selected and deselected, you're going to press your hue saturation button and it makes a new layer. And then you just slide the slider. So I want her eyes to be green. Two green looks fake, uh, two blue looks fake. So I'm just gonna go a little bit green. And then even, that looks a little bit yellow to me. So I just like to lower the saturation if you make it a bit gray. I think it looks more natural. So let's go back to the layers here. And if you find that you didn't select it properly, you don't have to do it over again. Just see this mask here? Select the mask and everything white is what's selected. So if you'd like to select more, use your brush with white. You can see there's a little brown down here and just brush it in. If you use a nice soft brush, it will end up looking more natural. There. And if you want to deselect, just change your color to black. And then you can come into these parts here. Oh, a little bit too much. Okay. Now she has green eyes. And I'm going to use the same method to change her hair color a little bit. I can be a little bit sloppy here because I have a solid background, solid grayish black background. So I'm just going to select all of it. You might have to be a bit more particular if you have um, a busier background. And I'm not being that careful with selecting because remember I can go back and select the mask. And I'm going to press select here to select the rest of this. And I can use the mask to be more precise with my selecting. There we go. And so I'm going to do the hue saturation layer again. And I love her red hair. So I just want to, oh, making it green isn't good. I want to make it more red. Not really red, not purple or blue. Pretty fun. Okay. That looks good. So I'll go back into my layers and then I'm going to select the mask and you can see that everything black is deselected. So if I want to select more, I want to use white. Right now I'm going to use black because I want to get this purple off of her skin. So I'll make sure my brush is selected and I'm going to zoom in. Um, I've been zooming in with a keyboard shortcut and that is control plus. And then use my space bar to drag 
and I'm going to make my brush bigger with the right bracket key. Um, if you're wondering where the bracket keys are, they're right underneath the plus sign. And then just kind of blend this in. Now, normally I would take more time, but I'm kind of rushing for demonstration purposes. So you can see here, I didn't select the hair. Just switch back to white and you got it. And let's make sure I didn't get any in her hairline. You can see the hairline's a bit messy, so I'm going to go in and select more than I should because then I'm going to go back and just kind of blend it in. So now select black to deselect, and I'm going to bring the opacity down a little bit since I'll be blending. All right. see what it looks like. All right, so I changed her hair color, her eye color, and I gave her some natural makeup, and I think that looks really good. You can see, remember we did the lips, the blush, the liner, the lashes, the shadow, the eyebrows, and the rest we just did with the hue and saturation layer. So that was pretty simple. So that's it. It looks really natural and it's easy and it gets even easier once you practice a little bit. If you like that video and you'd like to see more, subscribe. And if you think I'm really great and you just can't get enough, I just so happen to have a book, Stunning Digital Photography, number one photography book. Tony Northrup wrote it. He's pretty much my favorite. And we also have a DVD series, seven hours of video, uh, and it's a great deal too. So check this out at sdpcommunity.com. Thanks so much. That's it.